In 1947, the War Crimes Tribunal meeting at Nuremberg convicted 23 German defendants, most of whom were physicians, of performing criminal experiments on human subjects. One paragraph in the final opinion was of particular interest. The great weight of the evidence before us is to the effect that certain types of medical experiments on human beings, when kept within reasonably well-defined bounds, conform to the ethics of the medical profession generally. The protagonists of the practice of human experimentation justify their views on the basis that such experiments yield results for the good of society that are unprocurable by other methods or means of study. All agree, however, that certain basic principles must be observed in order to satisfy moral, ethical, and legal concepts. I think that today, all told, the great weight of the evidence is that medical research kept within reasonably defined bounds conforms to the ethics of the research profession. Who defines those bounds and what they are, however, is still under debate. The tribunal propounded ten standards to guide physicians in carrying out experiments on human subjects in the future. We want to highlight a few. Voluntary consent of the subject is absolutely essential. This element has one of the best and most complete definitions of informed consent that we know, yet it is unyielding and provides no way to obtain consent from those who are unable. The study must be designed so as to yield fruitful results. A poor study may justify an extremely low risk, but even then it is ethically questionable. The study should be based on prior evidence. It should be designed to avoid unnecessary physical and mental suffering. We need to minimize risk. There should be no reason to believe there will be death or injury. Think of the risk sections of consent forms. They include every possible risk. If they are real, should that study be done? Risk should never exceed humanitarian importance. Proper preparations should be made and facilities used. Studies should be conducted only by qualified persons. Subjects should be at liberty to withdraw. Scientists must be prepared to stop the study. What happened after that? In the U.S., nothing. The Nuremberg Code was not adopted in the United States. There was no reason, because, ahem, Americans would never stoop that low. That might have been a slightly exaggerated viewpoint. Over the next 20 years, there were several scandals. We will name two, but there were others.